The BBC Sports Personality of the Year shortlist was announced last night um, and we'll be talking about that in the next few minutes because not surprisingly Olympians make up the majority of their list after the remarkable summer of sport that we've enjoyed this past year. Uh, quite a remarkable summer in many many ways with all sorts of people coming to the fore not just in the Olympic Games because we've had people from the world of tennis, Andy Murray of course from cycling, Bradley Wiggins who did well in the Olympics but also prior to the Olympic Games as well. Our reporter Neil Cartmel joins me now to talk about um, the, the short list that was published last night. Neil, good morning. Do we have Neil Cartmel? I thought we did, but perhaps we don't. Um, Neil Cartmel will be with us very shortly to talk about... Neil, are you there? I am. Good morning, oh, Good morning, Neil. Uh, so who is in the running then, Neil? Well, the running... The, I'll give you the, the, the list alphabetically. It's Nicola Adams, Ben Ainsley, Jessica Ennis, Mel Farah, Kath Granger, Sir Chris Hoy, Rory McElroy, Andy Murray, Ellie Simmons, Sarah Story, David Weir and Bradley Wiggins. They are the 12 that have been selected for the shortlist. And who selects this shortlist and how do they go about it, particularly after a year like we've had? Yeah, it's a BBC panel. So on there you've got the director of BBC Sport, you've got the, the head of, of TV Sport here at the BBC, you've got the editor of the programme, you've got a uh, Five Live presenter, Eleanor Aldroyd, you've got three former winners, Sir, Sir Steve Redgrave, Baroness Tony Gray-Thompson, Denise Lewis, you've got the uh, director, so the chair rather of UK Sport, and also you've got three editors from the national papers, from the Observer, the Mail, and the and the Sun, the uh, sport pages. And how on earth did they whittle this year's heroes down to twelve? <laughs> well, it's a, it's a tough job this year. I'll give you three names that aren't on there. You've got triple Olympic gold medalist Jason Kenny, cyclist; double Olympic gold medalist Laura Trot. Uh, also a cyclist, and then you've got Alistair Brownlee, uh, who's a triathlon gold medalist who came back from injuries to win that, um, who dominates his sport, basically. So there's just three, and there's others I could give you as well, who in any other year would have won it, let alone not get on the shortlist. So you can see what a tremendously competitive competition it's going to be this year. And is there a clear favourite, Neil? Well, all the betting websites currently have Bradley Wiggins as favourite, but as I keep pointing out, the, the, the voting system's different this year. The programme goes out on the 16th of December on a Sunday evening, starts at half past seven on BBC One, um, and what they're going to do is they're not going to open the, vote, the, the phone lines and the voting lines until all 12 little films that reflect each of the, of the candidates have been shown. So that means that the last 45 minutes to an hour will be a mad scramble for you to go and vote for your particular favourite, which means that... Although he is the favourite with the bookmakers, it's a public vote, and on the night, who knows wh whose fans turn up and vote. I hope they've thought it through logistically, if they're not get, I'm going to allow 45 minutes to an hour for the phone calls, I really do. You do worry, because I think you can make <laughs> such a strong case, and you know, I mean, someone like Mo Farah, for mm. example, it, it will not happen again in our lifetime that a British athlete will win the five and 10,000 metre double at the Olympic Games. It's such a rare feat, not just for a Brit to do it, but for anyone to do it. it it's a phenomenal achievement. Then you look at sort of Jess Ennis, and the pressure that she was under. Andy Murray, the first Grand Slam since 1936 by a British tennis player. Um, Sarah Storey's won 11 Olympic medals over 20 years. Kath Granger finally got a gold medal. And then we already talked about Brad Wiggins as well. I mean, the, the, the strength of candidates, any other year, any of the 12 could easily have won it. Neil, thank you. Neil Cartman, that reporter, running uh, across the 12 uh, who are on the shortlist for Sports Personality of the Year. Local triathlete Melanie Riding joins me. Mel, good morning. Hello. Uh, th th this is, what do you think of this list, first of all, Mel? Let's get your opinion on the shortlist. Well, I think they've done quite a good job with getting a shortlist. Like, it, like the gentleman you were talking to just now just said, it's, it would have been an impossible job to whittle down all of the British heroes down to 12. And I, I think they've got a nice reflection, um, both men and women, which is nice to see this year, plus more than one Paralympic athlete, um, which is rare. So, you know, the mix of people, it's, it's a tough old list. Are we looking, do you think, inevitably at an Olympian as the winner? Um, I think poor old Rory McIlroy might have his, it stacked up against him. Mm. Um, he is still quite young. He's only 23. Um, so he's still got plenty of years to continue dominating golf. Uh, whereas the likes of Mo Farah, um, and like, like he was just saying, 10,000 and 5,000 champion. Uh, look at all the, the ra records he holds. He holds a European track record, British road record, indoor record for the 3,000 metres, track record for 5,000, half marathon record. You know, and he's got a heck of a story behind him as well. And, and huge charisma. And, and, you, and, of course, you've got people in there, haven't you, like Andy Murray and Bradley Wiggins. Neil mentioned Bradley Wiggins being a bookie's favourite. Not only have they achieved things outside the Olympics, they're also Olympians, of course. 
Well, indeed, if you're talking about who it is that's dominating their sport at the moment, then if in, on comparing Andy Murray to Bradley Wiggins, then there is no comparison. Bradley Wiggins has dominated cycling um, in both inside and outside the Olympics and inside and outside, you know, on the track, on the road, um, Grand Tour, first Grand Tour winner for Britain for how long? It's, you know, he's, he's got to be a favourite, but there is more than one cyclist in that list, so how will the people vote? I have heard people saying that, particularly after a year like we've had, where the sport itself was so fantastic, this award actually doesn't amount to very much. As a sports person, Mel, are you excited about it? I'm very excited about it this year because I think it's a very strong list of contenders. There's been a lot of speculation about who should be on it that isn't on the list and, and that sort of thing. And I looked at all the statistics to see who uh, who I thought should win it and shouldn't win it. And when you look at what they've all achieved, it's just incredible. I, I wouldn't want to be uh, on a panel of people. If there, if there was a panel of people that decided this, that would be a very t tough decision to make. Well, I'm going to make you a panel of one right now, Melanie Riding. Who do you think should win? <laughs> <laughs> I think when I whittled it down, I had it down to Wiggins, Farrah and Ainsley. And I think Ben Ainsley should be looked at because of, look what he's done. Mm. He has got won the, been the first ever to win a medal in sailing in five different Olympic ga games. That's any, anyone in the world. But on, on, I think um, on popularity, I think perhaps Mo Farrah will win it. I, I would agree with you totally about what you said about Ben Ainsley. I think he, he he should be, whether he is or not, he should be in with a shout. But yes, Mo, because of his charisma and all that goes with him, I think you're you, you're probably edging in the right direction. But Mel, thank you for joining us on the programme. Delighted to talk to you. Thank you very thank much you. indeed. Local triathlete Melanie Riding with us on BBC Radio Northampton, 13 minutes to nine. <laughs>